Thank you for this opportunity to comment, Chair Khan and Assistant E.G. Cantor. I'm a practicing emergency physician and founder of the advocacy group Take Medicine Back. I'm here to speak on behalf of my physician colleagues who are silenced by fear of retaliation and anti-competitive contract language, often preventing them from serving patients in their own communities. Physicians are further silenced through a systematic bypassing of due process rights. Meanwhile, immigrant physicians who depend on work visas are even more vulnerable. Executives of consolidated staffing groups have climbed to the highest ranks of our specialty societies, further intimidating physicians from speaking out. My specialty and the only de facto universal medical safety net in the United States is at risk of collapse due to consolidation and leverage buyouts by private equity. In the ER, I have the privilege of serving the Native American community at Cherokee Indian Hospital as a contracted physician in Western North Carolina. The only tertiary referral center for this community is HCA Mission that you just heard about, along with several smaller LifePoint hospitals. As you just heard from the two nurses unionized at these systems testify, these hospitals are severely understaffed. 223 physicians fled mission since the HCA takeover, according to the Asheville Watchdog. Mergers and acquisitions are disproportionately harming rural and underserved communities, many of which do not have the resources to fight back. I completed my emergency medicine residency in 2017 at an Ascension Hospital, one of the most consolidated tax exempt hospital systems in the country. When I began my residency in 2014, the ER was staffed by an independent group which was quickly acquired by a staffing firm called Team Health, the same group that, according to North Carolina Corporate Practice of Medicine Laws, illegally staffs all of the regional HCA and LifePoint hospitals in Western North Carolina. Culture shifted starkly after the acquisition to that of an assembly line, to the point where the image of a rat on a wheel became the unofficial mascot of our residency program. Corporate metrics now plague ERs across the country. Imagine being reprimanded for taking a moment to comfort a mother after the death of her child because of a failure to meet impossible metrics in an understaffed emergency department. This is the daily experience of many emergency physicians. In 2017, the year I graduated from residency, Team Health was acquired by the PE firm Blackstone. Shortly thereafter, Team Health was in the news for predatory billing practices, suing the working poor and garnishing their wages. While patients suffer, my profession's name has been tarnished. In 2019, the New York Times reported Blackstone-backed Team Health and KKR-backed Envision were behind a deceptive $28 million ad campaign by an organization calling itself Doctor Patient Unity, opposing implementation of the No Surprises Act. Meanwhile, physicians working for Team Health and Envision have no access to what is actually billed or collected in their names. Last week, Secretary Becerra directed the Department of Health and Human Services to evaluate how providers' billing practices impact affordability of care and debt. When studying this issue, I asked the FTC, DOJ, and HHS to make an important distinction. I am not a provider. I am a physician. I took an oath to oath to patients. Corporations did not. Please do not conflate us or refer to us with the same vague provider term whose origin hails from Nazi Germany, where it was first applied to Jewish physicians as a mechanism to demean them. The future of the emergency medicine workforce is also in peril. As deeply indebted medical students enter residency, HCA claims to be the largest supplier of graduate medical education in the United States. Documents acquired by staffing groups reveal an explicit intent to replace the expertise of board-certified emergency physicians with non-physician practitioners, increasing corporate profits while decreasing quality and expertise and placing patients at risk. This is often accomplished by charging a full physician rate even when patients are not seen by a physician under the false pretense of supervision, a practice which we refer to as deceptive notional supervision. It quickly becomes clear that the intention of this overproduction of emergency physicians indoctrinated into the corporate milieu during their formative years is not intended to relieve a physician shortage, but rather create regional labor monopsonies during the early stage of the pandemic, while physicians were risking their lives with inadequate personal protective equipment, Team Health cut physician hours and pay despite over $100 million in CARES Act bailouts. At the same time, increasing resentment from the public due to perceived greed of physicians has contributed to moral injury and a broad demoralization of the emergency medicine workforce. This story is not unique. It is estimated that nearly 50% of emergency physicians are now employed by a private equity-backed staffing group. United Health, the insurance company, is now the largest employer of physicians in the country. With these mergers and acquisitions in medicine, we are seeing a rapid decline in the quality of our safety net in our entire healthcare system with a corresponding increase in costs that is simply not sustainable. Thank you.